on behalf of Greens, uh, Madame Molly Scott Cato. Three minutes, thank you, Lopez. Thank you very much, President. There's a deep irony in the fact that the EU China Tourism Year and the European Year of Cultural Heritage will both take place next year. We will celebrate and, prom and promote European cultural diversity while at the same time working to improve opportunities to increase economic cooperation, in the words of the European Commission, with a regime that represses such diversity in its own territory, often with the utmost brutality and with a blatant disregard for human rights. I'm thinking particularly of Tibet, where culture and religion have been the target of relentless oppression at the same time as their remnants are being used to boost Chinese tourism. We should not forget that while Tibetans themselves are not permitted to travel freely, and while many Tibetans live in extreme poverty, the Chinese state-sponsored tourism industry reaps the benefits of the appropriation of Tibetan culture and history. In fact, Tibetans are rarely employed by this industry and are not even required to give their consent to huge infrastructure projects aimed at boosting tourism. I've never been to China, but it's clearly a diverse, rich and fascinating country. Neither have I visited Tibet, although what I have learned about the country and its culture through my work in the European Parliament is compelling. My own choice would be to avoid visiting an occupied country that is being deprived of its right to self-determination, and I would urge others to follow this policy. Much closer to home, in July this year, Liverpool FC signed a controversial sponsorship deal with Tibet Water Resources Limited that exploits the natural resources of Tibet to the detriment of the local population and the environment. Such commercial agreements not only lend legitimacy to China's occupation of Tibet, but are in fact only possible because of it. This sponsorship deal puts the club and the city of Liverpool at the centre of China's ongoing occupation of Tibet. I know that this does not reflect the views of either the fans or the city, and I urge the club to reconsider this misguided and ill-considered deal. We also need to consider whether this is the kind of reckless international economic cooperation that we want to promote as EU institutions. The unfortunate timing of the EU-China tourism year sends a signal that economic interests are once again being prioritised over human rights. In concluding, I urge the Commission to put human rights firmly on the agenda with our international partners, for example, by calling on Beijing to restart talks with the representatives of His Holiness the Dalai Lama that have been stalled since 2010.